guys, it's Vicky, and today I'm here with a tag video. I feel like I haven't done one in a minute, and I'm at kind of a different angle today because this this tag video has to do with my bookshelves, so I wanted you to be able to see them a little better. And this uh, tag is called the Bookshelf Time Capsule Tag, and it was originally created by Jesse the Reader, but I originally saw it on Laura's channel over at a book circus. Uh, she did this tag. She didn't tag me to do it, but I saw her do the tag and thought it would be fun, so... Here I am doing the tag. So yeah, let's get into the questions. Okay, so the first question is, overview of your shelves and where are they from? So, let me put my notebook down so I can present my shelves to you. Uh, I have um, four bookcases. They were custom made by my father-in-law, um, who is very handy with woodworking and such. And so he made basically four bookcases to fit in this space when we redid this room uh, um, almost two years ago. And he basically built four separate bookcases and put them in and then basically trimmed them out to make them look like a built-in. So yeah, they're really pretty. They're white, obviously, you know that. And then also I have a ladder that is to help me reach. It is a practical ladder. It helps me reach the top shelves because I can't reach them on my own but it's also just very aesthetically pleasing and I love it and I feel like Belle from Beauty and the Beast when I use it. <laughs> Question two is which shelf on your bookshelf is your favorite and for this one there's probably two. The first one is probably my Harry Potter shelf only because I really like just the way it looks, it has the original seven hardcover books and also I have the illustrated editions. And then I have some knickknacks that I have just kind of accumulated over the years, one of which is a wand that I got from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter uh, down in Orlando. And so I just like the shelf, it's just cute. I just like the little knickknacks and such. But another shelf that I really like on my shelves or on my bookcase um, is actually a nonfiction shelf that I just really like because it has um, a bunch of hardcover nonfiction books on it. I tried to keep the color scheme sort of black, white, or maybe a little bit of yellow. And then it has um, a cute little plant on it that I've had for a while. And then there is a book that I kind of have facing out because I love love the cover it's called dancers among us and it just it's a beautiful shot <laughs> of a dancer and all of the basically the book itself is a photography book of dancers in kind of like real life situations um, like crossing the street riding the bus um, that kind of stuff um, but they're doing like dancer poses and so it's just a really um, lovely book. I just love it. So I always like to try to display it. So yeah, it's probably between those two shelves that I always find myself looking at when I look at my shelves. Question three is, do you keep every book you read or do you ditch the ones you don't end up loving? And I think most of you know, if you've been around for a while, that if I don't enjoy a book, um, basically if it's two stars or less, or if I DNF it, I get rid of it. Uh, because I just don't want my bookshelves to be full of books that I didn't like. I want them to be full of books that I really loved or books that I will, I feel like I will return to. So any that I don't like, I just get rid of. And I actually have kind of behind me, maybe I'll do a little close up for you. There's a little basket on the one shelf. That's where I put books that I'm looking to get rid of. Right now it's full of cookbooks um, and a couple kids books that we are looking to donate. Um, and generally when that basket gets full, that's when I go and take it and donate it somewhere. Um, so yeah, I'm actually due to do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what I do with books I don't like or don't want to keep. Question four is what do you do when your bookshelves fill up? Luckily, I'm not at that point right now. Uh, like I said, I just got these shelves uh, about two years ago, um, almost two years ago. And so luckily I haven't filled it up yet. Um, so I'm basically just gradually putting books on there. Um, but I know in the past when I did have a smaller bookcase and my books were starting to outgrow the space, I would basically turn them um, and stack them vertically. That really helped out. I also have a uh, little book cart that I would kind of, I kind of moved books over to books that I knew I was going to be reading. Uh, in the future, like in the near future, I moved over to that cart <laughs> uh, to kind of make more space. Or I would just go through and do a little bit of a purge to kind of get rid of books that even though maybe I enjoyed them, maybe I'm like, you know what, as much as I enjoyed this, I'm not going to reread it. I need, I need space. 
and I would get rid of stuff. Question five, do you have an organization method? I do. So my bookshelves are organized by genre. Um, so basically I have um, a couple of shelves that are, if I look, I have to kind of look at it to see what I got here. So the, I have a whole shelf that's um, my Goosebumps books that I have at the top. I have a shelf that is um, like fantasy and speculative fiction or like I don't know what these books are so I just kind of put them all together. Um, and then I have middle grade YA. I have a shelf that has all of my graphic novels, um, short story collections, and poetry. And then I have um, a shelf for historical fiction, a couple of classics shelves, a couple of contemporary shelves. Uh, and then I have my horror and like horror, thriller, mystery shelves. And I eventually want to have, I have a whole shelf that's just Stephen King, which eventually will be bigger um, because as I read more of his stuff, there's definitely going to be um, more Stephen King books on the shelf. So, but for now, it's about a shelf and a half of Stephen King, um, and that's kind of dead center. Uh, I did that on purpose. And then I also have a couple of nonfiction shelves, and then I have three shelves on the very bottom that are my to-be-read books that hopefully will not grow any more than three. Um, hopefully I'll even get those down to maybe two shelves. That would be awesome. Uh, just to make sure that I have space for the books that I have read and want to keep. Question six is how often do you reorganize them and how do you approach it? I haven't reorganized these shelves since I got them. I basically kind of put them up and that's kind of how they've been. I've, they've just been slowly growing and some shelves have grown faster than others like my horror um, and thriller mystery shelves have grown a lot faster than some of the other shelves like say my classics shelves haven't grown at quite a, a fast pace. Um, so if I were to decide to reorganize them but right now I really like how they are and I want to keep them that way but if I were to reorganize I'm the type where I would take everything off like every single book would come off and I would just kind of the way I mapped these out when I originally organized them was I took sticky notes and kind of like put them on the shelves like because I like to organize by genre and I would want to keep it that way um, but maybe just change the order of things so I used sticky notes and kind of did that to kind of play around with how I wanted it to look and so I'd probably do that method again but I definitely would have to like take everything off and start with a clean slate. Question seven is is there a shelf that bothers you no matter what you do to it? Hmm. You know, I don't think so. I, <laughs> I'm i happy with how they all look. I know some shelves are just going to look kind of plain or whatever because of the books that are on there, but I don't think any of them look bad. They're just, there's some that are better than others. Question eight is which book color dominates your shelves? And I think this is pretty common for most, most readers. I would say it's either probably black or white. <laughs> um, especially in my nonfiction section, there definitely seems to be more white books. I don't know why that is, why a lot of nonfiction books are white, but that just seems to be the case. Uh, and then yeah, definitely black. There's a lot of black on there too. Question nine is what's the most damaged book on your shelf and how did it get that way? Uh, and this one is uh, pretty beat up and <laughs> it is the more scary stories to tell in the dark by Alvin Schwartz. I've had this this particular book, this actual copy since I was in late elementary, early middle school, I want to say. And I read this book over and over again because I loved it so much. So if you look at it, um, the the spine is like really, I don't know if it's going to show you. It's like part of it's ripped off. It's coming apart. Um, the front of it, um, I was like, I don't know, there's pen on it. The back of it, I was like doing math problems or something over here where there's like weird numbers. It's just, it's been through, it's been through it. So this book got that way because it was very well loved and still is, but yeah, I read it a lot. So it just naturally got beat up a lot. Question 10 is, do you have any books on your shelf that have major printing errors? And I really don't think so. I have at least none that I'm aware of that I've come across. So yeah, I, I, I don't have any. Question 11 asks, what's the ugliest book on your shelf that sticks out like a sore thumb? And I don't think I have that many ugly books, but this one does stick out mainly because it's just so damaged and old. And it's not the Scary Stories book. This is probably comes in a close second for most damaged book on my shelves. And that is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. It's basically like a black cover. But the spine 
like all the other Stephen King books I have, uh, even the even the mass market paperbacks, the spines are not nearly as damaged. I'm gonna have a hard time getting it to to focus. Hold on. As you can see, the the spine is just really like uh, broken and crinkled and. Uh, wrinkly and yucky. Um, so when I look at my Stephen King shelves especially, it just sticks out because because it's, it's ugly. Question 12 is if you don't already have your dream bookshelves, what do they look like? These ones are basically my dream. I've always wanted to have really tall bookshelves, a whole wall of books with a ladder, and I have that here. I guess the only thing I would do is extend it into maybe like the other wall in this room to make it like a full-on like library looking room uh but yeah i mean this was like a dream come true having this room the way it is and having a reading space and just having a room where books are the main focal point i just i just love it and i'm happy with how they are question 13 is what is the tallest book on your shelves and that one goes to journals by kurt cobain it's pretty big let me grab another book so i can sh kind of give you an example of how tall this book is so this is like a typical hardcover and that's journals. So it's quite a bit bigger. And the opposite of that, the question 14 is what's the smallest book on your bookshelf? And that is this little pocket edition of The Last of the Mohicans, which um, is also a very old, it's a very old book. Um, my sister-in-law, she got this like at an antique shop or somewhere and thought that I would like it for my shelves just because it's it's like an old antique looking book and it is very cute and tiny like again if you hold it up to a mass market paperback it's quite still you know quite a bit smaller so yeah it's cute it's small i'm probably never going to read this particular edition because like i said it's so old i would be afraid to ruin it question 15 is what book is your most prized possession so i have to go grab it because it's on the very top shelf and it's up there because I don't want it getting damaged in any way. So let me grab it. So the book that I would say is my most prized possession is this edition of Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. And the reason it is so special is because this particular book um, was given to um, my husband, his great grandmother. It was uh, she gave it to his grandfather as a gift one day. So in the inside. Um, she wrote to Jack from Emma, 1943. So it's just kind of special because it's it's a book that his grandparents, <laughs> you know, gifted to one another, or his grand great grandmother gifted to his great grandfather, you know, all those years ago. And it's Gone with the Wind, so it's a fairly popular book. And so yeah, this this sits on the very top shelf. Um, because I want it to stay safe. And the final question is, what's a book that makes you slip back in time to a past memory once you see it on your bookshelf? And so for that one, I'm gonna go with Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. And this is because as a child, I absolutely loved the po these poetry books by Shel Silverstein. This one in particular was my favorite. And uh, I never owned my own copies of these books though, uh, because they were very expensive so i never had them um copies of them for myself so any chance that i could get them from the school library the public library i was checking them out all the time and i would just sit and read them over and over because i just loved the poems i thought they were so fun and so it kind of takes me back to childhood and uh, like how much i loved these books and wanting um my own and so i finally um when I like moved out on my own and all that stuff and I had the space, I got my own copy of Where the Sidewalk Ends and yeah, now I have it to read to my kids and hopefully they will love them as much as I do. All right guys, so that is the bookshelf time capsule tag. Um, let me know down below how you would answer some of these questions. I would love to know how people organize their bookshelves and all that kind of fun stuff uh, because it's interesting, it's interesting. I think because not only, um, is to me reading is reading a hobby but also just sort of like book collecting or book just book organizing and stuff i also find very interesting and how people do things so let me know that down below and if you uh, are interested in doing this tag please do it it's really fun and that's all i have so i hope you guys are having a wonderful week and i will talk with you soon thank you so much for watching bye